fish in the lab, my boy. My boy. Yeah, we're about to take care of my boy, you know what I mean? 1147, we're about to get a crack and we're gonna start. La noche larga, yeah. La noche larga. The night is young. Man, I told the live podcast, most authentic, most organic podcast out here, bro. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a special episode because my boy Ish is gonna bless me with the tattoo today. Yes, sir. While we're talking about his story, shit, and getting his. Oh, shit. oh man. Uh, We've already been shit. talking for like about two hours, so huh, I, I don't even know what to say now. I'm, I apologize in advance if the audio may be a little far, if we get a little sidetracked, but we're getting, we're getting into business. We're getting busy. For people that don't know, Son Las, it's 1230, midnight, and we're about to go to work. <laughs> well, he about to go to work. Well, I'm working too because we're podcasting, but I appreciate everybody. Tuning in, y'all gonna catch some reactions because, yes, sir, it's coming, bro. It's okay, bro. I'll take it easy on you, man. I'll take it easy, man. Dicen que lo más al principio duele, güey. Lo más al principio. Está bien, está bien. Shh. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's get it. It's go time, baby. Let's go. It's go time. Ahí está, va. Ready? Who knows? All right, we're done. How's your feeling? We're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, Ish, for people that don't know, bro, how, how long you been tattooing? Oh, man. Tattooing? I've been tattooing shit. Okay, let me fix that mic okay. real quick. Just a little. Now I got you. I not see? Now we got you. Okay. Yeah, how long you been tattooing? So, man, uh, tattooing? I mean, I say it's 2012 where I started when I picked up on on tattoo machines. But um, old timer, you know, like I did when I fully dedicated and committed myself to the tattooing game or industry and shit. But probably be since 2015, 16. Oh. So it's what, like what, 16, 12. Like what is it, like? Seven, eight years or something like that? Yeah. My so bad, you, I can't do the math. <laughs> yeah, the math ain't mathing right now. You know, the math ain't mathing right now. Wow, so you, you started this, I mean, kind of a, sort of say like a late bloomer. Yeah. I would say, I would say kind of in the game. I mean, I, w- I was always into art. Mm. I was always drawn into everything, you know. My mom used to get mad at me because I used to draw on like, on the little saleros or like anything <laughs> like the ketchup bottles anything or whatever got your hands it was. on, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would just tag up ketchup and everything. I'd be like, "What the fuck? Why you always keep drawing on that shit?" And I'd be like, "I don't know. Like that's just what I like to do, you know." But uh, yeah, man, art was man. always been in my life. What uh, what city did you grow up in? La Puente. Yeah, born and raised. La Puente. Born. Well, I was born in El Monte, but. I was raised, I raised in, in La Puente. In La Puente, yes, sir. Man, the six two six. The six two six. For the one time, For shout out to time. La Puente, everybody, shout out to all the homies in La Puente. Yes, That's sir. right, yes, sir. We're doing it, man. We're trying to get busy, man. You Bro, know? so 
Again, we're in this session right now, tattooing and podcasting. I know it's a little, little tough to get a conversation in, but again, we we we, we trying. <laughs> All you can do is try. But yes, sir. Do you, do you think tattooing saved your life in a sense? Honestly, it did, bro. And it wasn't like, <clears throat> and it wasn't like uh, something that that's that people would. They were they weren't like giving me credit for it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. back in the days, tattooing was. It was like it was bad in on on the Mexican parents and shit and everything. They're saying if you're if you're tattooing like you're just tattooing gangsters, yeah. nobodies. You know what I mean? So it wasn't really out there how it is right now. You know, but yeah, it most definitely changed my life for the good. You know, you're you you have older brothers, older sisters. Are you the just oldest? Two, just two older sisters. Yeah, so you're the baby. I'm the baby man, and I'm the only boy, so. I'm the Chicago man. Oh man! I'm the Chicago in the familia. It was your mind just always just creative, like how you said you used to you love art. You used to draw on everything you got your hands on. Was that cre- creativeness just came to you? Is there or is there a certain something or someone that kind of inspired you to like, you know what? I, I want to draw. I want to. I want to paint. I want to draw on canvases. Like, well, when I was when I was young, I'd say like what like four years old or something, I used to always, I used to get intrigued with, like, colors. Like, mm. something about colors yeah. used to just catch my attention, you know? And um, and it wasn't, like, the whole black and gray, like, how I do it right now. Like, I started, like, adapting to, like, the colors and everything, just seeing, like, how, like, a red and a blue would make purple. And I was always interested on shit like that, you know? Yeah. So I'd always... um. So I'd always draw, like, you know what I mean? Like, as far as, like, looking up to somebody, I, there wasn't really anybody that I used to look up to other than Bob Ross over there in PBS. <laughs> you know, I used to look up to that guy because this guy used to do, like, 30-minute paintings, you sure. know what I mean? And, yeah. like, badass paintings and shit when, when, 30 minutes. When's the first time you got tatted? Or how old were you when you got tatted? Uh, I actually tatted my own self. I can't remember, though. How old I was. I did like a little happy face just to feel the pain. You know what I mean? I didn't go crazy. Um, but yeah, I did like a little happy face and shit. And I was like, oh, it's not that bad. But yeah, happy face turned into like a full full leg sleeve that I just did on my own, you know? And yeah, so it kicked off. You did your own leg sleeve? Yes, sir. I mean, I was just copying it backwards. Like it's just shaping, shapes and shades. You know what I mean? All right. So you got to take it to that. Like how's right now you're working on one, but like. Your process, how do you work top to bottom, bottom to top? Like, do you freestyle some of the things? Like, how is that process? Yeah. So, all the tattoos I do, I try to create less trauma on them. There's some artists that just outline everything and then they start getting down again back to the bottom up. But I'm like, I'm not like that, you know? Credit to them, you know? Because that's, that's the way they do it. But on my, on my own end, I like, to, I like to do it like a printer. You know, I start... You know what I mean? It's getting everything done. Yeah. And everything has to be done in that section and just keep going up. And when it's and when it's done, when I finish shading and everything, I go over it one more time. You know what I mean? That's to make sure I have like the the right tones to them, you know? The details. Yes, sir. When, when did you when did you did you know you were good at this? Fuck. I don't even know if I'm still good at it yeah. right now to this point, man. Uh, I'm, it's it's stop I, this now. <laughs> yeah, it's because I'm, it's because I'm, 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 I'm always, I've always been a student of the game, and I always think I'm, I'm doing bad, you know. Mm. So I just try to do my best piece day by day, you know, yeah. try to kill it and everything. But I don't know. It's a tough question, man. I, just, I still feel like I'm not really that good, you know. You gotta believe it yourself, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, for, for we, we had this, we've been having the conversation before all this anyway, but, you know, you were talking about your mentality and how it's been changing over the years. Yeah. What's that mindset you had when you came into the game of tattooing into now this far ahead in, in your game of tattooing and life in general? Oh, it's just different. Because <clears throat> before it was just like sleepless nights, long hours of work, just, you know what I mean? Uh, just Just tattooing all the homies and everything and, you know, just not making it about money. I mean, everything ultimately is, is not about the money, right? But now you got to think about it. You know, you got a family. You know, this is an actual career, you know? Mm-hmm. And you're actually paying 
it's not that they're just getting a tattoo, you know. They're getting years of experience, you know, tatted on them forever, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, like, it's, it's just, like, the whole tattooing for me just switched up drastically, you know what I mean, throughout the whole years. I learned a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? What was, like, one of those hardest lessons that you had to learn throughout tattooing that also that applied to, like, your personal life? Being a nice person, you know, being, I feel like being a nice person, it could go good and, and bad at the same time. Facts. You know, I'm, I'm cool as fuck with everybody, you know what I mean? But sometimes I feel like, you know, there could be some that just want to take, like, a little bit of advantage, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they just feel like, oh, he's, he's cool and shit, he's, he's cool as fuck and shit, and let me just uh, let this shit slide right here, or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. But they got to understand, you know, it's a hustle too, you know? Like, like anything, everything's a hustle, you know what I mean? It's blood, sweat, and tears, you know, nothing's... I mean, they see it like it's a fun time. It is a fun time. Like, I love tattooing, you know, but it's countless hours, you know what I mean? Yeah. Day by day and all that shit. But yeah, I would say, I would say that's kind of it, you know what I mean? All right, so how do you... When you go into tattooing, like, how do you apply that now to, like, your life also? Like, what's your... The mentality that you get into your artistic self to outside of this? Um, mm. Is it two different personas or is it just a different side of you? Like, what's that? It's, I kind of trying to like, I, I kind of try to like make it into like a one persona type stuff. Like, if I get if I get your question, what repeat it again? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, like when people play sports, we do podcasts, I kind of blank out, right? This okay. is this is who I am. Okay. But now when I get outside of this, this is still who I am because I became this person that Oh yeah. Just you know what I mean? I'm creative, I love to talk, I love to motivate, I love to help. Yeah. You, you're an artist. But outside of this, what is that persona? Is it the same one? Is it the same Focus, driven, artistic self? It is, bro. It is. It's just, you know, true to this, you know what I mean? Um, mm. I feel like I feel like when, when you're, like, an entrepreneur, you have to be like that. You know, you yeah. have to be your own self. You just can't play a part and just act like shit's, shit's about yeah. to be good, you know what I mean? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you're just only going to stress yourself out. Yeah, Why? Yeah. is because when you go to work, you got to just, you got to switch up. From personality to another personality, like yeah. I feel like just being true to yourself. I feel like that's that's the that's the only way you're gonna live a, a comfortable, successful life, Facts. happy life. You yeah, because I mean? if, if you try to play two two parts and be two different people, yeah, you get tired, bro. Yeah, man. What did, what do they say? Mentally it, draining. Bro. Mentally draining, and and you can be yourself a lot longer than being somebody else. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's tough. It, I mean, especially being in a social media game, being trying to please everybody. You, you, people tend to lose who they are because they're just trying to fit in, right? Like we're, yeah. we had this conversation about what we used to do and how we used to be of trying to please everybody and make everybody happy. But at the end of the day, like you're lost, mm -hmm. and who's there to help you get back into who you really are? Who accepts you for who you really are, right? Like. Exactly. Once you start choosing yourself and putting yourself first, well, of course, like you're gonna see who's really a, who's really there for you and and cares about you. And I feel like ultimately the one that has to care about you is your own self. Yeah. You gotta find out who you are, you know, because if you don't know who you are, then you're just gonna be on a shell. Yeah. You're gonna be on a shell of, of a person that you don't even know who you are. You're just walking on your own self, right? But. You don't even know who you are. Yeah. I, you got to find yourself out, man. You got to talk to yourself. Can't expect people to, to look at you and respect you when you can't res do the, yourself respect. the justice and respect yourself. Exactly, bro. Yeah, I know. So that's why all this, um, you, you, you know, you being like yourself, that's how it takes place. You know what I mean? Oh, man. It goes it, a long ways, man. Yeah, being, being kind. Mm -hmm. Being kind goes a long ways. Being yourself goes a long ways. And, and you can't be a dick, bro. You nah, know, like... Bro. What do they say? You, you treat the janitor like if he's a CEO. Yeah, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you just can't be a big-headed person acting like your shit don't stink. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just can't be that person, man. Like, but at the same time, like, you, you, everything you have, that shit could be taken away. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're not grateful for what you have, if you're not appreciative of the opportunities and, and the life that you have, well, 
You know, what about that? What if you get taken away? You're going to still want it back or? Yeah. It's, it's tough. I, someone actually told me today was, you know, your bad day might be somebody else's best day. You yes, don't, sir. You don't, we don't think about it that much when shit is going all good and gravy. But mm -hmm. do you do you feel like you had to surrender in some sort of way to a higher power to kind of keep yourself sane? God, bro. God. Without God, honestly, like, and this is me speaking, right? Like, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys could could um, relate to this, you know? Without God, man, without, like, uh, having, like, a spiritual... Because I feel like to be successful, and I'm not saying I'm, like, completely successful, right? Because I'm still climbing the ladder. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I feel like to be successful, you have to have three things. You know, you got to be first physically right, right? Because... If you're not confident in yourself, how are you going to be confident with others? Or how are you going to do your stuff the way you want to do it, you know? That's that's one. You got to be mentally mentally good. You know, your mind has to be right. You have to have a clear mind. Even even though everybody goes through, through trouble and everybody goes through a lot of shit, you know, you got to learn how to change that, you know what I mean? When you go back to work, when you go do stuff, you know what I mean? And that's where... Being real to yourself, being happy to yourself takes place, you know? And the last thing is spiritual. Mm. Honestly, you could mm. be strong. You could be, you could conquer anything. But at the end of the day, if you're not spiritual, like spiritually strong, connected to God, bro, you're only going to stay there, man. And yeah, man, uh, I had a, you know, I, I, I gave my life to God a couple of times, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying like I'm fully committed because I do go out and I have fun and everything like that, but yeah. I'm a strong believer in God and I know he's real. Foundation, he is bro. Real. You know, some, something that keeps you sane and helps you on your dark days when, you know, nothing tangible can, can really help you. Nobody tangible can really help you. Yeah. You know, they say everybody else can leave you, but if you have God, you can't ever lose. Yeah. You uh, can walk through a dark valley and shit. And if your, your faith is there, then oh, man. you're walking like nothing. But if you're not spiritually connected or anything, you're going to be scared the whole way, man. Yeah. So what did what'd you figure out happiness is? Happiness is, is family. You know, it's, it's not like all the riches. Of course, you need money, right? Everybody needs money to survive. But, you know, family, family over everything, you know, being happy, you know. Your happiness is, is the best shit ever, man. That's, that's what you need to fight for. You know what I mean? It ain't going to come easy. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, what they say, like, if you want something, God going to test you for it. See how bad you really want to be that or have that. There's a little saying saying, um, God, put the strong, God puts the strongest battles on the toughest soldiers. So if you feel like your day is going bad, you know, just know that God's, God's doing this for a reason, you know, because you're going to grow. You have to grow, you know? What was your toughest battle that you had to encounter damn i mean i feel like uh my toughest one of my toughest battles and you know um would probably be what was it me just you know when i used to party a lot when i used to do all this kinds of stuff and all that stuff and i used to fight my inner demons and shit and at night i couldn't i couldn't sleep you know what i mean um until, like, I just, like I told you, I found, like, a little connection to God, you know, and everything. Yeah. And he just changed my life for everything. So, that's, I'd say that's that's one of them, you know what I mean? But, yeah, there's that's a lot of them. But, I mean, we're good right now, you know? Thank God. Do you feel like you, you enclose yourself when you talk about emotions? Like I what? <laughs> you feel like you enclose yourself when you talk about emotions? <laughs> yeah, I do. I kind of do, shit, bro. It happens, bro. It, it happens. It is, Yeah. I think it's just I a kind of do. I kind of just try to like, you know. All right, very hard question. Okay. Very hard question. Do you feel if people, if you express your feelings, people see you as a weak man? Oh, that was my struggle. I feel like I could never project insecurities with other people because, at the end of the day, say like the person gets mad at you, then they'll project them like it's nothing. When in reality, they were your freaking weaknesses, you know. So that's why I've always been like that. I, well, I used to be like that, right? So now, you know, I talk to my girl, I talk to my fan, but I'm about a lot of situations, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I feel like that was, like, my weakness, you know what I mean? 
like if saying everything to everybody, you know, um, expressing myself, and somebody just going and just making fun of it or something, you know, like that shit ain't. To me, I don't, I don't, I don't really fuck with that. So that's why I never really opened my mouth to anybody like that, you know. Not unless people, not other than like people that I trust, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it, uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, sometimes when you express your feelings, your emotions, or a situation you're going through, it, it'd be your own that use that against you. Yeah. And when they use it against you, you're like, damn, bro, I trusted you with my life with this. And how are you doing that and shit, how are you right? doing this shit to me? Or how right, you, bro. you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it's tough and it's sad. And, and sometimes it's, again, people project an insecurity onto you that you had nothing to do with it. It's just they're, they're trying to deal with that shit on their own. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, it just projected on you. And now you're the, the collateral damage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, nah, it's just, you lose people, bro. Yep. Yeah. Are you... Are you okay with losing people? And if if you oh, yeah. if you are, how fast or how slow do you let them go? I mean, now before I used to fight for a lot of people. Like, you know, I feel like they had to be a part of my life because they've been there forever. Yeah, I feel like my homies, you know, like say homies or whatever it is. It could even be family or whatever it is. You know, I would always fight for it, even though like I knew I was in the I wasn't in the wrong. I would always fight for them. But now, like, you know, as, as life, life taught me a lot of stuff and a lot of things, I just learned just to go with the flow, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. If, this is my thing. If it wasn't your time or it wasn't, it, those, per, those people weren't it, then, I mean, just let it be, you know? Yeah. Because if they left, it was for a reason, you know? They were just there for a, what was it? It was a saying I seen, like a, like a little... Like a little saying I was reading the other day. It said something along the lines of, you know, it could be family or it could be friends or anybody. If they were there for, if they were there at a certain amount of time, just let it be. Because, you know what I mean? They were only there for that specific time. Mm. You know, they're not there forever. You get what I'm saying? Something like that. But, yeah. I mean, it, it made much more sense. Uh, and you know some, what I mean? And most of the time, like, we... We feel like we want this person in our life forever, but, you know, again, they're going to show their true colors when situations happen, when yeah. as time goes on, and, and you have to make that decision. Are you going to keep allowing them to keep doing this to you? Are you going to keep allowing them to over, step over you every single time and you got to be okay with it? Or are you going to put a halt to it and be like, right. you know what? I deserve more. I deserve better. I, des- I deserve the most. So exactly. You, it, it, it stops now. Mm-hmm. And people don't like that. As soon as you express your like yeah, as soon as you express your feelings, your emotions, or how oh. you oh, oh you feel that? Why you feel that way? Oh, you change. Oh, you think you're this? Okay. Yeah. So that's how you really you're feel. acting brand new. Oh, you think you're all this. Yeah. Oh, you think you're all that. Shit, it's it. not that you know. It's just I feel like it's in life you grow. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're not growing, you're wasting time. Exactly. If you're not if you're not maturing, if you're not going through a situation through life, you're you're literally just wasting time. And that's probably one of the most sacredest things in the world time. Mm-hmm. Wish we had more time, right? What did Nipsey also say? Find your purpose or you're wasting her? Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes. That's why That's why I bumped that full heavy, man. <laughs> that, that guy was so inspirational, man. Is still, you know what I mean? Yeah, that, that legacy, bro, that he left, he left on that everybody still follows. And, and that's what, like, exactly. you know, we, we, how he says, the marathon, like, people, I, I've done it myself where I try to sprint to the finish line thinking that was the finish line, and then I get there, and it's like, whoa, that's only lap one. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, you got to keep going? Exactly. And so it's like, it's, it's, this is a marathon. It's a, who can do this, who can do this at this frequency for the longest time? Exactly. You know, you can have a good month, but what about a good year? Did you have that? Right. You know, did you have a good couple years or just one moment? You know, so, and it's, everybody has their time, but it's learning how to pivot, how to grow, how to change your habits, how to better yourself. And again, times change, people change. And, and if you don't change, then, you know, you're doing yourself that injustice of staying there. Mm -hmm. Just don't become that victim of, oh, everything's going bad or whatever. The right card was endowed to me or you had an advantage, bro. You need a tough times. 
Tough times create strong men. Mm. You know. Yes. And if you, because if, if if everything's just given to you, you're not gonna appreciate anything. You gotta, you gotta really work hard for everything. You know that way you could appreciate all that you got or all that God's giving you. You know. Mm. Because if everything's given to you, what's going to happen? You're just not going to care about it, you know? Yeah. You lose it, yeah. It is what it is. It but is if, what it is. I mean, But I if didn't. you work for it, mm -hmm. you built it, you put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, ain't no one going to take that shit from you because you will know. not allow it. No, and if sir. you And if you do allow it, then you just know it wasn't, it didn't mean that much to you. Right? Exactly. <sighs> yeah, man. That's crazy. Yes, sir. How you feeling on the piece, man? I'm okay. good. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. The conversation is going good, so I'm, I'm chilling right now. Let's go chilling. That's right. Now oh, later, yeah. I'll cry for all twitching. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> hey, fool, you right? <laughs> you look like you're about to pass out, fool. <laughs> nah, he's, you're taking it good, bro, honestly. Yes, sir. I, I said it. I, I think I said it yesterday, bro. I'm one of those that thrives off of pain. I'm going through a, a hard time, a tough day. It's going to be my best day. It's your best day. It's my best day. I got to thrive. I got to go. I got to prove to myself that I can get out of this. Yeah. You know? You're I, the lion in the jungle, man. Uh, what did, it, what did uh, that Notorious movie said? Uh, what was it? Diddy was like, put me in the jungle. I'm going to come out with a chinchilla coat and a chinchilla hat. Shit, you know? I, I said, I'm the king of the jungle. Exactly. But it, it, it's times, bro. But at the same time, how you said earlier, in reality... Life doesn't give a fuck about how you feel. Time goes by, hours, minutes pass by, and it's either you show up and show out or that shit's going to pass you by. There is no perfect time. Mm. There is no, fuck it. What if tomorrow I just wake up with all this confidence? What if tomorrow I just wake up just wanting to grind? You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it doesn't come like that. You know, like, success really comes by actually literally, like, waking up, not wanting to get up off, off the fucking bed. Because... Nice. You know, you got two deci two decisions. You know, you either stay in bed or you just break all that shit. You know, you take a hot cold shower. Boom, next thing you know, you get you get all fucking you get all like um you get all energetic and yeah, yeah you just conquer the day. Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Yeah, bro, that's that's just that's ultimately what it is, you know. You just have to do it. Just do it. Just like just like Nike. Just, just do it. Just, just like do Nike, it. yes, sir. But yeah, what's, man. What's your quote of the day, fool? Give me, hit me with it. For a quote of, the, quote of the day? Quote of the day or a quote that you live by, that your mom, your dad, someone taught you? Well, my mom always told me to just be a man of my word. And if I'm going to do something, if I'm going to do something, I, if I say something, I have to do it. Yeah. You know, because in this, in this world... You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that there's a lot of people that don't have word, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um there's not a lot of good people. We're well, not good people, but like there's not a lot of people that that commit to what they say, you know? And that's what you need in life, you know? You need your word and you know, the other stuff. <laughs> but I guess, <laughs> you need your word and your, you know? <laughs> Tell but me yeah, you, that's just, that's just what your, it is, man. Tell me you lose your train of thought without telling me, though. Right? <laughs> Shit, bro. Nah. But the quote of the day, I don't know. It's because there's a, there's a lot. I mean, something that I live by is like, it's the lion mentality, you know? Because I always think about it like, you know, like the lions, they're out in the field, but they don't go looking for, they don't go looking, like the food doesn't come to them, you know what I mean? Even though they're king of the jungle, you would figure, like, everybody just praises them. Here you go, a piece of fucking of, of, of hyena or bison or whatever the fuck it is, right? Yeah. Like, even though you're just crowned the king of the king of the jungle, doesn't mean everything's going to fall into your hands. Mm. You got to go out and get it. You know what I mean? Like, if he don't hunt, he don't eat. You know, the lion doesn't hunt. That's why I got that lion right there, man. And it's, <laughs> and it's, and it's growling, you know what I mean? Because it's a vicious one. I don't want to get a relaxed one because relaxed one's... Too chilling, you know? Shit, you can't have that. Yeah, if you don't hunt, you don't eat, man. So every day it's a it's a every day should be a, a a conquer day, you know what I mean? A motivation day. Like you gotta get that shit. You gotta conquer it, you gotta kill it. Last 
han visto por todos lados Se ha rumorado un tal Dusko Que es un hombre desarmado Corta de sus iniciales Una valedera asociado Que goza de protección De temer a la policía tiene mucha habilidad, se mueve la luz del día, por eso donde lo topa. Se hace los que no lo miran, y él tiene mucho poder, es pariente del tigrillo, nadie lo va a detener, es un hombre decidido, hay mucha gente sumando. How's, how's everything though? How's the, how's the tattoo? I feel cool. good. Yeah. yeah. So far. That's right, my boy. I can't promise you enough. <laughs> I can't 40 promise minutes, you later, I can't bro. promise you this. <laughs> oh. I want to let everybody know we did the nummy cream. <laughs> we had to sneak it in a little bit, you know? Have like your clients, have they asked you for like nummy cream or is like certain, just like certain areas? Everybody does. Everybody says, hey, what about the nummy cream? And All right, I'll what be, do you say to that? What do you I say to that? I don't, I mean, you look, if, if you're going to get, like, a big piece, right, you're going to get, like, a whole back piece or whatever, like, side of the rib or, or something, then I'll be like, okay, just get it done, right? Yeah. Like, I'll put some on and shit, you know, but if it's a small piece, But no. it, is it really nummy cream or is this, like, crema, make you think it's nummy cream and it's not really nummy cream? You know, I had, I had to do it <laughs> once to somebody because, honestly, it gives you, like, the, the chicken skin yeah, yeah. when it gets numb, <laughs> and I don't like that shit. So one day I had to tell that fool, hey, you know what? Like, I'm, I'll put nummy cream, dog. Like, don't trip. And um, I put a, I put some stencil stuff. That thing, <laughs> that, that little ointment I put on yeah. you, put the stencil. I put that shit on them. And I was like, just let it sit for like 30 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> Took a little break, you know what I mean? Smoked a little, drink a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, a, yeah. hydrated a little bit. And then um, came back to it and I said, hey, you're number what? And that fool's all like, oh, maybe. It just, man, I, I think so. And guess what? That will finish the piece. It's all mental, bro. That's why I don't really bro, like. That's it why, yeah. is. Isn't, bro, they, it's, they it's say mental. that same shit with like taking a cold shower in the morning. Oh, yeah. That like, shit, yeah. And honestly, it's, it's, it's mental, bro. Like everything is mental. Like when it comes to, that's why I tell all my clients. I tell them about like previous experience that I had with, with a couple of artists. I did one of my homies. We, we, did, a, we did him a back piece, you know, and... um. Shout out to my boy D-Lo. That's the one we did a, a back piece on. And uh, he gave me some good, he gave me some good knowledge. I think he was, we did like 30 minutes to an hour on, on a back piece. It was us four, like um, us four artists and shit. And we were just going ham on his on his whole back. And that foot took a break and that foot was just smoking, smoking. He was just walking all around. And we we're just talking to ourselves like, damn, I don't think this foot's gonna take it, right? Yeah. And um so he said, fuck it, let's see what, what, he, what he does. And next thing you know, like a, like a switch came on him, right? And then he just came through and he said, fuck it, let's do it. And that fool literally, he laid down and he took the whole session. And, um, fuck. well, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Shit, shit happened and, you know, like, it's a whole ass back piece, you know what I mean? So he took it and um, he came back like a couple of days later and shit after he recovered. And I was like, hey, how did you take that, bro? Like, how did you take it? Mm. And he's like, bro, no lie, that shit fucking hurt. But he's like, you're going to laugh, though. He's like, I have kids. He's like, you know what I thought? At the very moment, I said, if I don't finish this piece, they're going to kill my kids. Like, something's going to happen to my kids. Fuck. And guess what? A parent doesn't want nothing happening to their kids. So he toughened that shit out. And I guess you could spark something, you know what I mean? Yeah. The mind's so powerful that you could spark <sighs> something, man. It's, and yeah. that's exactly what he did, and he took it. And I was like, bro, that shit's, it's, that shit's deep, bro. So shout out to my dog, d -Lo. Shit, shout out to say. him, bro. Fuck that. And honestly, like, I, I, tell, I tell everybody the story, the same story, when, when they're already complaining, like, like, oh, that shit fucking hurts. I tell them, bro, 
It's just one day of pain. You know what I think about, like, even coming into today's tattoo, and I've always came in with this mentality when I, when I do something. It's like, obviously, beauty is pain, right? They say that with yeah. girls and shit. But for me, it's like, this tattoo, it means something to me. Right. So, wh why am I getting it? Because I had to go through the pain. Like, exactly. What I'm getting is a representation of what what has been in part of my life, which is every single piece that I have on me has been a part of my my journey, right? Journey, bro. So in this chapter of my life, what well, came with pain? Yeah. Like I, I had to go through some hard ass shit to even realize, like, man, it's been a long ass fucking journey, bro. Like losing Fuck people, yeah. losing myself, losing. You get I, lost, bro. You get lost, man. And and one of the, and one of the things is like, it, it's hard to find yourself, and it's, it's hard to find the way back to who you used to be, and we we. We want to be this. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be who I, I realize it that you're not gonna be that no more. You can't be you, that. You're not that same person that you entered when you entered this chapter of your life. You're gonna come out different, and you gotta come to terms with that, right? Like the same person you are now wasn't the same person last month, a year from now, a, three years from now. Like you're a whole different person. So stop trying to chase that exact old version of yourself because that old version of yourself didn't know how to handle this. Now you handle this problem. Now you handle this issue, and look who you are. Now you have that shield over you. Exactly. I feel like if if you go back to square one, how you started and shit, I feel like you're downgrading. <clears throat> you downgrade because at the end of the day, you know, you want to live life. You know, every every part of your life is a chapter, mm. and you want to keep upgrading and progressing as a human being. You know what I mean? You want to do that. And if you don't do that, and if you keep going down, then you know what's going to happen. You're going to fall back into old habits, yep. old temptations, you know? Yeah. Stuff that used to fuck you up, you know? So why go back? Bro, like, it, why you got to go back? You know what I mean? Just and, keep and, going forward. And it's one of those things, right? Like, you, you, you get, there's always temptations and there's always things that are going to tend to try to get you back to your old ways, whether it's yeah. certain vices or certain people. Come back to this. Yeah. Oh, you come on, bro. You know this, but even yeah. yeah. Oh even, my bad. I don't mean to. Continue. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, even on like on on situations, say like yeah. financial, emotional situations, makes you want to go back to like, man. When I used to drink a lot, all the pains used to go away. Mm. But it's like, bro, like you can't do that, you know, because you're just you're at another chapter. You yeah. can't do that. You know, you just got to keep pushing forward. You know, you just got to deal with life. That's life. That's, That's life. life. Man. You just got to keep pushing forward, man. You owe it to yourself to be better. Exactly. And you, owe it, and you owe it to whoever believed in you throughout those dark moments to become a better version of yourself. Yeah. Because when you didn't believe in yourself, they did. So, in con que moneda la vas a pagar para atrás if you stay where you're at or you go right back to who you used to be? You can't. And people, and people tend to lose respect. <sighs> They lose respect yeah. when you start falling your, back. Your word doesn't mean anything after exactly. after the certain, uh, how many times. You're going to tell me you change? All right, cool, I believe you. But if you keep doing it time after time after time, oh, I'm going to change. Yeah, right. We know how that goes. I'm, I'm always a, a a believer in, um, you know, actions speak louder than words. Facts. You could talk as much yeah. shit as you want. You could say all this shit that you're going to do. But if your actions are not yeah. are not the same, Oh, they're not matching your fucking, your energy. Yeah. And it goes they're to like. words. It, you know, you ain't going to do nothing, man. Like, you ain't, people ain't going to respect you on that, you know? And, and I believe that too. And it applies to like love, bro. Like, yeah. you know, if you tell me you love me, show me. Show Don't me. Don't just tell me. Show Don't me. tell me you love me. Yeah. Just, just show, show me, me, man. Just yeah. show me with your actions, right? Just, just a little gesture, man. Yeah. Just a little it, bit. It goes a long way. Exactly. Right? And, and I don't mean that just in like relationships with romantic, you know. I mean that with friendships. I tell my yeah. friends I love you and I'm proud of you and I'm there for you. Right. But if I'm going to do that, it's like Kevin Gates said, it's through the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to show up for you whenever you call me, whenever you need me, but that's because I love you. It's not a, it, it, this isn't a, let me, let me choose when to. Nah, I love you. It's full on, 100%, 24-7, whenever you need me. Yes, and sir. This is not a, ah, today I don't love you enough. Or, oh, this is happening? Mm, I don't think I love you. Nope. It's everything and then some because if, if you do not show up for that person but yet you say you love them, you don't really love them. 
Exactly. You just need them for some sort of reason in your life. And all those words just really go to shit. Yeah. Because they don't mean anything at the end of the day, ultimately. They can't, you know, those those friends can't fall back on you, you know, because yeah. you say you were going to do that and you're not doing shit, you know? Yeah, you're you, just talking about it. You say you're going to show up for me when I needed you. Where are you? Where are you at? You tell me, you tell me I could count on you, but yeah, you didn't answer when I did, exactly, when I called you. Exactly, bro. That's yeah. why I had to cut off a lot of people. Like I was telling you earlier, man. Um, and, and people take it personal when you do and they it. Take it, they take it personal. It's not, it's not personal, man. Hey, what, just, did, what did I do? What did I do? Why yeah. talk to me? If exactly. I got to If I got to tell you what you did... Then we 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 shouldn't and, have this conversation. And I, yeah, and I shouldn't be. And I, I'm a grown ass man, you know. I shouldn't be calling you out for everything, you know. I just have to walk away, and that's it. Because if you're no good to me, then why should I keep you around, you know? Yeah, nah. Why should I keep you around? Man? I'm I'm begging you to stay in my life. You want to walk, walk. Yeah. You want to go, go. All the all the power to you. Yeah. But if you leave, come. Be ready with the mindset of there's no coming back. There's no coming back. There's no. You know what I mean? Yeah, nah. That's that's how it was. Like I used, like I told you earlier, like I used to have a lot of, I used to have a lot of friends, man. And um, that's when I used to party, right? Yeah. And on the party, I, everybody loves you. Everybody loves you. Everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody bro. wants to be around you. Hey, Ish, where you at? Hey, where you at? Hey, let's party up. Let's do this. Let's do yeah. that. But then when it came time to like say, hey, you know what? Like I'm actually feeling like shit, or like when I was feeling like down and shit. Hey, nah, fuck that shit, dog. Let's just, just come over here and drink. It's cool, like I was saying, yeah. I, like I was telling you, it's cool. Like I'll go and drink and shit, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have that shit bottled in your, in your yeah. own self. Like you, you can't, you can't express it to nobody, you know. And right. it's gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna create a habit that it's, it's normal for you to just keep shit bottled in. When in reality, that's bad. Like, you can't do that shit. Tell me how you You're feel. You're only killing yourself. Tell me how you feel about this. I heard a quote the other day, and it said, I hope you win the battles that you don't ever talk about. Ooh. That's just deep. Because everybody, and I mean everybody, goes through through those battles. And they don't even say it, you know what I mean? If that you, shit is hell can, can you take us through through a, a time that you had a, fought a battle on your own that you didn't tell nobody about that you could share with us? Um, I had a lot of them. I did, I, all right, so I, before you get into this, I like I need you to understand that there is other artists, there's other men like you in your position, in your mm -hmm. venture of life that they had to go through, that they just been waiting for someone to speak up. Right, right, so right. Now what we're doing here is we're creating that pathway for them. Hey, we're leading by example, and and look at us. We're happy. We're successful. We're living a purposeful life, but you can also do this, but you have to be ready to share this. You have to be ready to yeah. surrender. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. you know, there's so maybe right now they're surrounded by vices. They're surrounded by fake love. They're surrounded by, by momentarily people. And they're just waiting for someone to save them. And in reality, they're just, all they're doing is waiting for someone to tell them something and be like, Hey, I believe in you. I got you. It's going to be okay. It's time to take this this next chapter in your life. Yes, sir. So for you, and again, you 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 shared with me a couple of things prior to this, but I feel like you are a person, a man that has held a lot inside because you just had to function, you had to provide, you had to show up, and you had to you you had to succeed. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you have fought a lot of battles internally. That you never spoke about and you never told no, nobody about. So if you could take us through one that kind of really changed your aspect of life that, you know, made you stronger after going through the whole thing. Well, one of them that I could say um, or that I could think of, right, because there was a lot of them, like I told you, um, would be like, you know, when when I used to like always dream about like being like a like a sick tattoo artist and just being like. Just being on top of everything, you know, when it came to, like, art, successful and everything like that. Yeah. I would always have, like, struggles because, like I said, there was nobody, there was nobody pushing me forward on the on the art of tattooing, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like it was really out there. It's not like I came from, like, parents, uncles or anything that, or anybody that, that did tattoos. I was the only one that fucking did art, you know oh, what I mean? So shit. That's... Yeah, so... so Basically, like, trying to scream out, saying, like, hey, I want to be an artist, and, and everybody trying to, like, 
um, trying to shine you down type stuff, saying like, oh, yeah, that's just like a, that's a hobby. That's not going to be like an actual job. You know what I mean? That, that thing, that thing took a toll, you know, mm. especially being like the only one that wants to like, that wants to be successful when it comes to this type of art. Yeah. You know, that, that shit is mentally draining. Um, it's depression, you know, because I fell on that shit. I, I remember we used to just drive the whip, just drive the car and just just bump it and just go to like, uh, at the time it was uh, over there, down, down Colima, over there in La Puente or Sina Heights. <laughs> uh, there used to be a, uh, uh, what is it called? They used to call it Top of the World. Uh, and yeah. it was like a big hill and shit. I used to just drive and I used to be like, fuck. Sometimes I say I'll take the homies, but sometimes I'll take like drives and shit and just, you know, think about life and just think about it like in a way where like questioning myself, like, what the fuck? Is this shit even worth it? Like, mm. you know, I feel like I have this big ass vision, vision, but anybody, like everybody, all my surroundings don't see the same things, you know what I mean? Right. So that shit just led to like a lot of like depressions, you know, like uh Talking to myself, like, what the fuck am I? Like, why, am I why would I, why am I here? Like, you know, I should just work regular, you know? Why the fuck am I trying to live a life that nobody believes in, you know what I mean? Mm. But that's one of the, that's one of the struggles that, that's one of my big struggles that I had, you know? I had support from my parents, but it wasn't like the, like the actual, how do you say it? Like, genuine support. Yeah. It was like. Patting your back, like I believe you, man. You yeah. you do a good job. You yeah, know what go I mean? For it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I, I love my parents for that, but they just since they're Mexican, they just only know for they just only know hard work. You know what yeah. I mean? And they don't know anything like uh, making money, doing they, what you like to do. You know? They don't know entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You know, and and even for those parents that do have a, a business and on, and are entrepreneurs, you know, they learn in a whole different era than what entrepreneurship is now. That is so. It used to be so frowned upon and so far fetched, but now it's like, yo, anybody here can be an entrepreneur. Right. You have a, a passion, you have a gift, you have something you love, go for it, monetize it, open an LLC, open an S Corp, whatever, whatever you choose, but just yeah. do it, man. Yeah. So, like, what was like? How did you get out of that that mindset? So the way I got out of that mindset, because I've always been like this. Um, you tell me I can't do it, and that only sparks me up, you know? It's either I take it in a bad way, and I just um, and I just get, like, sad about it or mad about it or whatever. Yeah. Or I tell you, all right, motherfucker, you're going you're gonna to watch, and you're going to see me succeed. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're saying that, you're, that I'm not going to do, watch me do that shit, and you're going to watch me. You're going to see that shit, and you're going to like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because... Yeah, that's 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 uh that's basically what what I was doing. Like that's that's what I did. I transitioned from, you know, like uh, being depressed and thinking that this is not even it for me to like using that shit as a spark. Yeah. Turning that shit to like a, a negative into a positive. To a positive, you know what I mean? And just proving people wrong, you know. Not only family, but like people that will say that they'll never get tattoos by me because. What the fuck? Like you, you're whack. You know, at the, you know, cause I was just hungry and I was just trying to get it. So I used to do tattoos for free. Everybody, all my homies, and I tell a couple of my homies and shit. I'm not gonna mention any names, <laughs> <laughs> but they'll be like, they'll be like, no, nah, fuck, that. I'll never get a tattoo by you, dog. Like you, you know what I mean? This fool gets down. Like your shit's whack, whatever. But you know, like I use that and shit. I use that as like a spark in me. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a burning desire. And I did that, I transitioned it, and next thing you know, without me even thinking about anything or anybody like that, yeah. since I was already on my goal mode, they slowly came back to me like, hey man, what's up, man? I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to get some work or whatever. But it's like, those are like, like proud moments. Like, okay, you came back. Oh, now you came back? Okay, now you're getting, turn, turn now, you're, the, now you're getting the, the business treatment. Yeah, turn, turning the oh, non-believers into yeah. believers, bro. Yeah, 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 but... I mean, it's all love at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's because at the same time, like you can't blame someone for not believing in you when exactly. you know you're at the beginning stages, and you know you have those ride or dies that, hey, bro, I believe in you. You got this. You know, I'll be that guinea pig. But you know, you have some that you know maybe a little bit more on the harder side. Like, nah, bro, that's and you. You fucking around. You ain't playing. 
But they yeah. just got to see how serious you are in this. Exactly. You know, exactly. so I, I mean, I take that to heart too. We had a conversation. I'm like, it's all right if you didn't follow me earlier, but now it's like, it we're undeniable. Now you see how serious we are, but you see it serious because we take this shit serious. Yeah. So if I show you how serious we are, then I know for a fact you're gonna believe in it. Yeah. And exactly. It is. It may be for you. It may not be for you. But shit, we're here. We're here. Yeah. Yes, you're, sir. you're not we're meant here. for everybody, but you're meant for somebody. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and um, that that makes a lot of yeah. Yeah, what you say right now? You said you said you're not meant for everybody, but you're meant for somebody. For somebody, yeah. it's funny because I was looking for like units, like to to open up my own shop and everything. And I went to a, I went to a spot over there in Pomona, right? Uh-huh. And it was kind of like in the ghetto side and shit. And um, it was the landlord. I was just talking to her. I got the number and I was talking to her. And um, I I told her like, hey, what's up? Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to rent out a unit. Like, what's what's the information? They said, "What do you do?" And I said, "I do tattoos." Cause uh, I'm a tattoo artist and shit, right? And um, and I was I was thinking like, "Hey, I don't think they're gonna fucking they're gonna want they're not gonna want me there." Cause obviously, like, there's a lot of people that still yeah, the stereo- they still the stereotype exactly the stereotype. they're still they they ain't gonna fuck with the tattooing, right? And then she's like, "The reason why I ask is because I have a homie that I have a friend that he's an artist." But he does badass work and he gets a lot of money. He has a shop over there in Beverly Hills. I'm like, why don't you just try to go get a shop in Beverly Hills? I said, cause damn, that's just fucking pricey. And then you know, there's a there's a quote that she told me that sticks around me, and I don't even know her. I just called her. Yeah. She said, "You can't catch a shark in the beach. You gotta go. You gotta go to the ocean to catch a shark." Mm. So that to me, like, it gave me like this understanding where like. If you want to be big, you yeah. can't be going to, like, little cities like this. Yeah. You got to go out where they're actually fucking admire your work or where it's the business side, you know what I mean? The good yeah. side, the side where you actually see money, yeah. where you become successful, where people actually appreciate the art more than the streets. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that shit stuck on me, you know, and, and, and that shit's dope, bro. Like, that shit, it was pretty dope, dope that she just shared that with me, you know? And it actually stuck on me for... Forever is gonna stick on me, you know. Do you think for, uh, jumping into that that topic real quick for a tattoo artist is it better to have a shop or this private studio? Um, I, I feel like it goes it goes hand it goes in hand with like ways. a like a barber shop. It kind it, it just depends what type of artist you are. If if you get comfortable like on a studio and you don't mind paying your booth or whatever it is, then by all means, you know, just stay there, bro. But if you really want to be if you really like want to take initiative, taking another step on the tattoo game, or whatever it is that you feel like you could be your own boss and you could be like a, a leader in the team, yeah, and just take that step. But obviously, like there's some artists that are just comfortable just coming in tattooing and just paying booth, which is cool, you know what I mean. But to me, like I want to start my own team. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna build and mold my own team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's that's the type of vision I have, you know, yeah. I have more like of a, I want to be more like into a leadership position, you know what I'm saying? And just inspire people, that's that's all it is ultimately, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I guess it kind of just depends on the, on the artist, you know what I mean? So, what is one thing you want people to remember you for? Uh, that was good. That's a good question. That's a really good that's question. That's a good question. I would say, <laughs> my art <laughs> but it's more than just my art you know what i mean like it's more than that i just want to i just want people to just see me like you know this this guy's you know he came he came from like the ghetto and shit you know he he came up he's inspiring cuz he's not big headed yeah. you know he just didn't get out of the city and fucking forgot about the city like yeah. you know what i mean i want this guy i want everybody to just say like oh this guy came up this guy put on for the city, yeah. and um, he's a big inspiration to just inspire everybody from not just my city, but everybody that's that's going through through struggle times or, or you know, it's just following bad steps. I want them to, just to like think back and just see that there is opportunity in this life. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just like whatever wherever you're born, that's the way you have to be. Mm-hmm. Fuck no. There's a lot of shit, man. There's a lot of places you gotta go travel. You gotta go see. You know what I mean? You just can't be in your own city. 
your whole fucking life. You, you know what I mean? That's a lot of shit. That's a lot of life. What do you What do you tell I'm that saying. that uh, teenage ish? Your teenage self. What would you tell yourself? If I would have, if I would have tell myself something, yeah, I would tell them that just, just do it and just don't think about it, don't procrastinate, because that's the problem I had. I was just thinking about it too much instead of just doing it. I would just say that. That's probably like the only thing I would say. You know, just get to it. Who gives a fuck what everybody says, and just do it. You know what I mean? That's that's what I would tell myself. You know, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's life. There's a lot of lessons, you know, in life. It's too many, bro. Mm -hmm. But you have to be willing to listen. You have to be willing to open your eyes and see the truth. You have to be willing to to make the hard decision to either change something, change people, change scenery, or move on. A lot of people just don't want to come to terms with the harsh reality of. Hey, life isn't the same way you once thought it was. Mm -hmm. This person isn't the same way you once thought they were. Exactly. This situation you're in right now is not the same one that when you started it in. So it's either you, if you're not happy, you change it. And if you're not happy with yourself, what can you do to change yourself? And again, people just don't want to do the work. But to tie everything back into what we said earlier, it's, it's time. You don't have a lot of time. It'd be... Bless enough with the time you do have right now throughout your day, throughout your life, and maximize every single minute that you have. So when you wake up one day or you look back at your life when you're gray and old, like, damn, I did that shit. I did that shit. And Out you're, of myself. yeah. And, you know, your generation is going to be part of you, you know? That shit. Yeah. That's just the way it is. That's, that's the way it should be, you know? Leave a mark. Leave a mark leave in his life. Jeez. You know, you gotta leave you gotta leave something, man. You know, you just can't be the one that that just worked for somebody or something and you're retired and next thing you know, two days later you got replaced. You know, you can't be like that, man. You just you can't be a robot. You get what I'm saying? Like just do your own shit. What's like that? everybody's born artistic yeah, in their that? own ways, you get what I'm saying? What's that video? Go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. If people, if people can replace you within 24 hours, then you were never a value to nobody. Mm hmm. Yeah. I should. It was a good podcast for a good tattoo session. That's yes, still sir. going, so hopefully we check back in at the end of this whole thing. But, Ish, thank you for taking some time to, to unfocus a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Where am I tattooing? <laughs> Wait, was this supposed to be. Uh... Nah, uh, but. Tulsa Life Podcast, again, most authentic, most organic. We out here doing our thing, and si Dios permite, we'll check back in by the time we're kind of done with this, so. Yes, sir. Pero que aguante los tiros Siempre tengo varios cuernos